Okay, so let's welcome back. We are going to start the proxy section. God, I hope when I move this, I hope it's not like making banging noises and like boom, boom kind of noises when I bump into something. Hope your ears are safe. Uh, sorry, this is the edge of a table. So we're going to be talking about proxies. Um, and how we can use it as a initial reconnaissance tool to take advantage of an exposed HTTP proxy. Okay. You know what? Let's just work by segment. I wish I could just like zoom in the camera. But, um, move it up a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So, Let's assume that we have a target, and supposedly, and this is a very arrogant claim, but a lot of people say that their websites are unhackable. That's almost like a direct challenge for an attacker to come after them, to prove them wrong. If you tell a hacker on the street in his face that he's unhackable, he's going to get a really vicious beat down, all right? <coughs> um, yeah. You know, I should have bought one of those stamps from the surplus at UNLV. <laughs> But uh, let's say that we got that target, arrogant jerk who has a public IP of 68.170.22.8. We know this because we pinged his website or you know, we just like ran a DNS recon against him or something and we figured out his actual origin IP somehow. You know, he's not protected by Cloudflare, which is his first mistake. For, for the record, don't get Cloudflare, get Encapsula. Not because I work for Encapsula, but because Cloudflare their servers are pretty um, dodgy when it comes to consistent security. But let's say Arrogant Jerkwad right here with this public IP address apparently has a exposed HTTP proxy within the same you know, IP range that is apparently really significant. We don't know what it does. But the point is the target server apparently trusts this proxy and we found out about it all right and it just so happens that we would that it has an exposed port 80 or 443 and it didn't require authentication well the plan is we're going to force this proxy to do the nmap scanning for us or in, or uh, web application scans for us instead of ourselves because do we have permission to authenticate no we don't. We're not even allowed to get anywhere near that server because at least a guy has some common sense to say, hey, we're not going to have some jerk while I touch our back end. And we have a public IP. I made this up. Um, you know these um, beginning octet for their subnet range is 131. So I, I just made up a bunch of numbers. Are we aware of the exposed proxy? Yes, we are. So what do we do? Well, since the proxy doesn't require authentication, we're going to turn that into our proxy server. We're going to latch onto it like a parasite. We're going to send it, we're going to tell it the exposed HTTP proxy to run that scan. And then this exposed HTTP proxy, which is not us, but the target knows, it will scan it. The target will divulge a lot more information than what it's supposed to do. And then it returns back to the proxy, and then the proxy will return back to us. That's the general overview of the plan of attack. This is an information gathering technique. It's not a direct attack technique, but we can learn some serious information of our targets that would actually uh, would help us significantly in compromising their machines. Let me show you what we could find out. All right, and I'll show you how we can leverage that here on the whiteboard. I'm gonna have to, hold on. And I'm just gonna have a point and iterate. Let's find out from that proxy, HTTP proxy chain scan, because we're gonna use a tool called proxy chains to actually investigate this attack. Let's, um, with that we found out their internal IP and their internal subnet of the public IP because we don't actually know this without the proxy scan. We don't actually know that for a fact. 
until we did it, until we scanned with the HTTP proxy. We found out that the machine is a VPS, that's a virtual private server like um, Amazon, Elastic Cloud, and its IP address is 172.31.64.133, and the local gateway or routing path is 172.31.64.254. Now we know some important information. So when we, if we were to compromise the server, it will be passing through this. That means as soon as we get to that server and pwn it, we need to immediately run a stealthy, a very passive scan. Nothing big. So we can figure out what kind of web application firewalls it might have, a NAT firewall, or you know something that could have caught us red-handed. It's a very careful, careful process, basically. We can also find out domain names, like myhackablelawfirm.com, and it doesn't use HTTPS, it uses HTTP. On top of being decked on your Google search rankings, you also are an idiot for running HTTP. <laughs> I'm an idiot too, don't worry, because um, Listener Unlimited has a few um, HTTP pages. We don't really need it because, we don't need HTTPS because we don't um, use like uh, web applications. I actually run Bootstrap. So the farthest they'll go is like um, a hacker can try to attack an outdated jQuery version, but they won't succeed in attacking my website. And I have an extremely aggressive intrusion prevention system that will automatically ban people after five failed logins on the back end. So I don't really need HTTPS. Don't worry, my site's safe. So from the domain name, we can use a tool called The Harvester. The Harvester. And what it does is it looks up by domain name on sources like Bing, LinkedIn, Google, and it will harvest you a massive list of email addresses. Hopefully they're public emails, not to mention you can actually just save the entire web page, cap the entire web page over the HTML and then grep it out, grep all of the email addresses out of it. I'll show you how to do that too. So we have their domain name, and from there we obtain 200 emails, that's a huge law firm, and we have company names, and we probably know associated or affiliated companies that were featured on the website. Now we got more email addresses we can farm. And we also found out that the web host is Amazon Light Sale because it's using a Amazon IP. That's not Amazon, I'm just making this up. <coughs> and the, we also found out that there are exposed ports not visible about the proxy scan. We found out that it was running an outdated version of Microsoft IIS with an outdated .NET framework. Now we can go on exploitdatabase.com and then figure out what kind of new zero days, supposedly, or old zero days, that we can leverage against it. We found out that it uses server message block, 139.445, and it runs the outdated framework. Maybe it's vulnerable to Eternal Blue, on, which has actually been available on Metasploit for the last one and a half years. The same thing that launched WannaCry is on Metasploit right now for little teenage script kiddies to abuse. And we located a possible root or admin user. Now we don't have to use a username guessing. We can just go authenticate directly as root. We can try commonly available passwords. On there, There's a, a word list. There's about maybe just like 200 passwords in it on your Cal Linux installation. We can at least start off by trying to brute force it and not to mention it has SSH enabled, maybe we can just one-shot it, who knows. But this all happened not because of myhackablelawfirms.com fault, because their idiot, I guess Linode, I'm sorry, I, I'm not trying to defame Linode, but I, I don't like Linode, they only recently Im implemented DD, uh, DDoS mitigation. They are still way behind when it comes to decent cybersecurity. So let's assume that they're, this was uh, run by Linode and that's why there's an exposed proxy. This was the weak link that revealed all of this. All right? This was the weak link. The proxy told us everything. We know so much more now. We even got leads on how to send spear phishing emails to each one of these dopes in myhackablelawfirm.com. Now, Let's go over some proxies because they actually, since I started filming this course, they added like a lot of neat 
um, frameworks and uh, different types of proxies that can tell us even more. <coughs> now, we have two basic staple proxies that are viable for pen testing, for penetration testing. That's the SOX, or Secure Sockets proxy, and the HTTP proxy, which is directly used for web applications. Then, um, this is thanks to the Google Udacity Growth Google Scholarship that I'm in. I just learned that we have JavaScript proxies, which now we can leverage. I'm not here to teach you guys JavaScript, just here to inform you, because I need to learn how to do this too, uh, how to build a JavaScript proxy. But if this is possible, then I should be able to run scans directly against a web application. We do have a customer who is run, running a uh, typing test, and one of my jobs is to assess the value or likelihood of a cross-site scripting server-side attack. That means the website dispenses the exploit when it gets pwned, and that's a serious legal liability. So we're going to look into JavaScript proxies. Um, Finally, we have a third or fourth proxy. It's not really a proxy. It's more of like a, a daemon service. We're taking advantage of ARP, and it's really cool because we can actually merge the networks on your wireless card with the, with the um, networks on your Ethernet card, like some unholy union, like two planets smashing together. It's awesome, and it's really helpful if during a wireless penetration test, if the guy just sucks at maintaining his router, or maybe it was just covered and gunked up in dog hair or something, um, just a not good working router, we can leverage an ARP proxy slash ARP bridge using a DARP routing. It's a program they have in Debian and Kali Linux. We can use that to forcefully merge, you know, malfunctioning wireless. Uh, cards or malfunctioning routers, subnets, with our own network interfaces. Now, word of warning, do not rely on this frequently. There is a glitch with the, um, the proxy ARP daemon, where basically your flying pen test career could get, <laughs> could get blown right out of the sky, easily one-shotted, because uh, CRT will now be given a I win button if you use ARP proxy. If you get sent, uh, if you receive a certain packet into your uh, proxy ARP daemon, proxy ARP daemon doesn't know what to do with it. Now, just FYI, ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. You use a daemon as a middleman to ensure that these packets between a Ethernet card and a wireless card receives that packet. And that's how it's able to allow an Ethernet card and wireless card to even talk to each other. Since we're abusing this to um, forcefully merge a crappy wireless routers network, be aware that a responding um, incident response team could try to one-shot you if they realize you're using proxy ARP. All right? Tools that we need in Catalytics and Debian to do proxy attacks. We mainly need TSOX, proxy chains, Tor, NIC2, which is a, a, a basic web application scanner, and MAP, Nessus can actually reveal the um, HTTP proxy that was right here. <coughs> I don't like OpenVos. OpenVos is the same as Nessus. They used to be the same project, but then they split off. OpenVos has poor documentation and it's really hard to install. Um, we do need NetDiscover because this will help divulge in any local IPs that might know something about, you know, the target we're coming after. You don't need to have the harvester. That's only if we figure it out, you know, if we found a domain name. Um, let me see, what else? It's important to note that these are web application scanners. That means they just attack a certain web application, like um, software I think is mainly cross-site scripting, but can also do SQL injection type attacks. Burp Suite mainly does HTTP or a URL 
tax some tax, they cannot change the encoding, or they can even encode a simple malicious command into a encoded string to get a passive web application firewall. The point is, they can all be proxified. They are proxy aware, all of them. What does the proxy aware mean? Proxy aware means that they're designed to run um, with a proxy. So they are designed to run with proxy and sorry, just like they're, they're designed to run with a proxy and basically they will all take advantage of this of this exposed HTTP proxy. So now you can run scans for cross-site scripting. You can run scans for a command or shell injection. You can run scans like Burp Suite or um, you know the Open Web Application Scanner Project, I believe. You can run all of this through the perspective of the vulnerable proxy. It only took one link. It only took one one moron from Linux. Don't sue me, Linode. It took one moron from Linode to ruin your day, and it wasn't even your fault. That's what I'm trying to get at. We might need something like, um, maybe. This is actually a little paid install. NVPI Reader is an open source deep packet inspection framework. It means that all of that encrypted gibberish you see on TCP dump now becomes clear, readable text. It can figure out what protocol it's using, too. Like, is it using VoIP? Is it using SIP? Is it using email? It's important to monitor your own connection because you don't know if incident response teams are coming for you. Remember, we're, we're talking about this. This class is meant as a red team kind of briefing, you know? Um, I do know that obfuscation of four bridges and this is required to run application for puzzle transports, can effectively hide it from the open source version of deep packet inspection. That does not mean that you're immune to some to private solutions like a, what do they call it, a blue soup group or something. It's, it's a subsidiary of semantic. I'll, I'll explain it to you later, but basically this blue something solutions assisted Bashar al-Assad of Syria in monitoring their own people using deep packet inspection. And I'm not sure how similar it is to you know, our open source framework. But just FYI, we need that to verify at least we're mostly immune to detection. Not guaranteed, but mostly. Anyways, this would be a really fun section. And you're wondering, why was this all related to wireless attacks? Well, because through the wireless local network, we probably found some information about related organizations. Now we can do remote exploits or uh, scan for remote vulnerabilities. And there's no such thing as a specific rigid discipline of hacking. All right, wireless hacking, as you are aware, may be reliant on certain other types of techniques, like web application penetration testing. What if I couldn't pull the password in clear text out of the router administrator page? What if um, I did find a cross-site scripting vulnerability and I need to know where to inject that shell and what kind of commands am I supposed to run to dump the password? That is all of the stuff, web app attacks, wireless attacks, they're all interrelated. You can't just fixate your mind on a single type of attack. This is why, you know, you might be wondering, why might this, this course that I paid 200 bucks for, that's a, um, a suggested price as of March 16th, why is this $200 class, you know, uh, jumping all over the place? Because it's all related. There is no way you can selectively eliminate, you know, these tactics. This is the future that we live in, and to be honest with you, hacking has gotten way easier. There's a lot more sharing information nowadays than before. So, good luck. Um, I wanna, I want you to immediately jump into 
you know, proxy chaining because this is really going to help. This is almost essential to making sure that you can grab as much info as possible without getting immediately caught up. Don't forget about our counter forensics section of the course. We have to, um, the counter forensics section, because we need to delete and overwrite zeros the most important and incriminating records that we have on our Linux machines to make sure that we have a case that is beatable if you get caught up. There's a lot of misunderstandings in, you know, penetration testing, and if it's not specified in the engagement letter, you could be sitting in jail. There's lots of instances of that. Anyways, see you around. Hope you're jumping in this immediately.